Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. Thomas Francis Mayer, born August 23, 1823. He was raised in a Catholic family which had commercial ties to Canada. At 11, his family decided to enroll him in Clongwest Wood College, and then he attended Stonyhurst College in England. His favorite subjects? composition and rhetoric. As he comes of age and sings about his career future, Mayer decides to join what becomes known as the Young Ireland Movement, which included Protestants in this overwhelmingly Catholic country. He wants to do more than what have been done before. Daniel O'Connell, who had read the Irish opposition against English rule for close to two decades by the 1840s, was asking the Repeal Association, which he had run in July of 1846, to pass a measure calling for the abstention from violence, that the organization would not use violence in its struggle to gain more autonomy from England. It is in that moment that Mayer stood up and said that the organization should not surrender violence as the last resort, that they should maintain that option like so many other revolutionary and nationalist movements around Europe have. It is in that moment that Mayer gets his nom de guerre, Mayer of the Sword. Because O'Connell has so much influence over the organization, they kick him out. And others are following. They create a new Irish Confederation, which calls for more self-governance of Ireland. It doesn't come yet. When the revolutions of 1848 sweep across the European continent, in March of 1848, Mayer goes to France. He wants to enlist the French to help, just like the French had in the late 1700s with Wolfe Tom. But the French, suffering their own revolution, are not interested. But Mayer returns with a brave new symbol for Ireland, the Irish tricolor, a flag that unites 
the orange of the Protestants and the green of the Catholic Irish was a symbol of peace, the white in the middle. Getting increasingly concerned with developments in Ireland, where the potato famine is ravishing its population, and the developments on the European continent where revolution sweeps things and monarchies away. In July of 1848, the British government suspends the writ of habeas corpus. Knowing they are going to be targets now of arrest, the members of the Irish Confederation go to County Kilkenny, where they engage in what has unfortunately sometimes been called the battle at Margaret McCormick's Cabbage Patch. It's one short standoff between authorities and the Irish revolutionaries. It's one week that the Irish actually in 1848 rebel. It's ill-timed, it's badly planned, it's ill-sought out, and it's quickly subdued. The leaders are put on trial, including Mayer, who is convicted to transportation in Van Diem's land, modern-day Tasmania. Nevertheless, Mayer decides to escape once he is down in Tasmania. He hands back his ticket of leave, as it's called, in January of 1852. He heads to the coast, boards a ship, and by way of South America reaches New York to a hero's welcome. A convict escaped from the British authorities. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.